Hi, I'm Alec Bright, educator for the Hampton Roads Naval Museum, and I'm here today at Naval Station Norfolk with Willoughby Spit behind me. And this is the site of the first ship-to-shore flight by Eugene Ely in 1910. In Norfolk today, sightings of Navy planes like the E-2 Hawkeye overhead are commonplace. But just over a hundred years ago, the Navy was reluctant to accept the importance of aviation to naval operations. At the dawn of the 20th century, air flight had just begun with the Wright brothers having successfully flown for the first time in 1903. Largely a fantasy, airplanes, air travel, and air warfare were found only in fiction novels from the minds of Jules Verne and others. It is easy to see why, then, when it came to new proposals that airplanes might be valuable to military operations, that the Navy was the last to consider them. The Navy only came to recognize aviation's future role in naval operations after a brave test pilot, Eugene Ely, proved that a plane could be launched from a ship and successfully landed on a shore nearby in a test conducted here in the Hampton Roads. Eugene Ely was born in Williamsburg, Iowa in 1886, seven years before the U.S. Census would declare the American West closed, making air the next frontier to explore. As a young adult, Ely worked several odd jobs before moving to Portland, Oregon in early 1910, where he worked for a wealthy businessman, E. Henry Weim, who owned a four-cylinder Glenn Curtis flyer. Ely proved himself adept at flying and quickly became known around Oregon as a capable pilot in the dawn of aviation. Ely traveled across the United States flying the Glenn Curtis Flyer in several exhibitions before being approached by the U.S. Navy at the request of the Secretary of Navy, George Van Linkirk Meyer, who established a committee to investigate the use of a aviation in the Navy. At the request of the Navy, Ely would fly from ship to shore for the first time in 1910. November 14th arrived and the time to prove the possibilities of naval aviation with it. A Curtis pusher was craned onto the USS Birmingham, a newly commissioned Chester-class scout cruiser, and the Birmingham was to be anchored a quarter mile off of the coast of Fort Monroe, where Ely would launch from a 25-foot long platform purpose-built on the bow of the ship. The weather that day was unforgiving, with storms rolling in from the Atlantic Ocean, threatening to put an end to the flight before it even got underway. But with the added pressures of having media aboard the ship, Ely was insistent the test go on. With only a cut-up bike tire as a flotation device, Eugene Ely flew the plane off the bow of the ship at 3.32 p.m. on November 14, 1910. Initially, Ely was unable to establish control over the aircraft, and he plummeted 37 feet towards the water immediately after leaving the bow of the Birmingham, damaging the propeller and leaving Ely drenched. Navy leadership and news reporters looked on nervously and with excitement as Ely regained control of the aircraft and disappeared into the fog and rain. Within five minutes, Ely had landed the plane on Willoughby Spit to only a few observers who looked on from the beach. Because Ely had fallen short of his target to land in Portsmouth, he had to use a phone of a local to locate the Navy and to inform them that he had successfully landed the plane, albeit short. Though Ely was disappointed he was not able to complete the entire task of flying to the Norfolk Navy Yard in Portsmouth, his accomplishment was still recognized as people noted that Ely had just made history in Hampton Roads. The Virginia pilot reported the following day that aerial aviation proved yesterday that it is a factor which must be dealt with in naval tactics of the world's future. With Ely's flight in 1910 here in the Hampton Roads, naval aviation had been born. Today, Ely's legacy is honored most notably in the Eugene Ely Memorial Park, located in Naval Station, Norfolk. Eugene Ely's daring first flight set forth the path of the United States Navy that has been unchanged ever since. As you can see, the U.S. Navy operates aircraft carriers throughout the globe, flexing its military might in naval aviation. 